Okay, so today we've got a Bipper van in, 1.3 diesel engine, coming as a non-start. Turns over, but turns over a bit too fast. I suspect that the timing chain has snapped. And I had to get this engine out to do the chain on it. So I'll go through what we need to do to get one of these engines out. And then we'll do a separate video for the chain. And obviously we're gonna have to probably rebuild half the cylinder head because the rockers are gonna be broken. So let's get it out. Now right, first thing we're gonna do is get the air box assembly off. Seven mil Jubilee down here onto the turbo. Undo that, pull it off. Undo your mass airflow sensor. Just normal, pull this, the yellow slider out. Push the pin down, pull it off. Breathe the tube on the back. Push the two pins in, pull it off the back. Now, this intake tube, you've got a bracket that bolts to the side of the cooling bowl. The T30 bolt, undo it. This releases this. We need to pull up. There's a rubber tab there. Underneath here is one. There's also one on the back facing this way. So you'll need to pull up towards you. Otherwise, you'll break something. Take it away. Take the whole air box assembly out as one unit. Now, foam insert, take it off. Batteries next from under the battery. Take 13 mil for the strap, hold it on, undo the quick release connection, and 10 mil there, take the battery off completely. We'll get the battery out now. Okay, so the battery's out. Let's get our battery tray out now. 13 mil bolts. Some of them may be a bit harder than others to get out. One there, one there, one at the back. And clip your cables. Lift the battery tray out of the way. You might have a pipe coming from the back of it. Drain off the pipe. Just like that. Get that out. Now we can see our top gearbox mount. Also get access to our gear linkages and things like that. Next, we're going to get the coolant drained out. That's all out of the way. Um, you can drain the oil out as well at the same time if you want to. Get the fluids out of it. And then we'll start moving the disconnecting and things like fuel lines. Anything that's connected to the engine, to the actual body of the van, needs to be disconnected. And go from there. Okay, we're now under the van. This is the radiator drain plug. We're at the passenger side behind the boost hose. This radiator's always got a leak, so we'll be changing that at the same time. This is the drain plug. You've got a 13 mil socket or spanner over it, loosen it off with a bit of hose on it and allow the coolant to drain out. While we're under here, we're gonna do things like disconnect the exhaust system. So this is 16 mil. Again, we'll clean that up. Penetrating fluid on it. Try and give it the best possible chance. Take that out. And we can look at things like draining the gearbox all out and the drain plug. Um, engine oil can come out at the same time while we're up here. Um, and then we'll probably take the wheels off after that. So let's get on with draining the coolant and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've drained the coolant out to the container. Drain that our oil and our gearbox oil as well. 12 mil key for this. Taking off our clamp for our exhaust. Penetrating fluid on that. Now we can look at things. Rear engine mount mold here. These bolts. Engine mount, take it off. And then we're going to get the wheels off. And start putting the shafts out. So. Let's get the uh, engine mount off. Right, I've now got a rear engine mount off. Just sit here. Two bolts at the back. Big bolt through the gearbox. 
up into the gear. So 18s and 19s. Now the engine is free to move. Next thing we need to do, <coughs> the wheels off. So now we can undo the bolts, the hub, undo the centre drive shaft nut, which means the neck mount, not these stakes out. Undo the nut, will be tight. And then we can pull two bolts out, and pull the hub forwards towards us to knock the drive shaft out. No need to disconnect the track rod end. No need to disconnect the drop link either. Brake caliper, you may have to take the caliper off, but probably get away just popping the rubber out, give you enough room to when you pull the hub forward. You're not stressing the brake line. So we're gonna get centre drive shaft and that out. These two bolts out. Any cable that's in our way out of the way. And then knock the drive shaft through. So then we can then get in here and remove it from the gearbox itself. And the principle's gonna be the same on the other side, but the drive shaft will be slightly different. I will show you the difference. Okay, so remove the drive shaft from that. 36 mil. You will need a stepped 36 mil socket to gain access. This is a very big 36 mil step socket. It's a sealy socket. Two pins out of here. Knock them out. Disconnected the rubbers, the wiring loom, the ABS sensor, and the brake wear sensor. We pushed the drive shaft out the back of the hub. Now, we want to pull our drive shaft out of the gearbox and get pry bar in between and you can just pop the drive shaft out. Once it's loose, it will just pull out. Now, this is the reason why we drain the gearbox first. If you pull that out, 90% chance you're going to have oil pouring out of here. So pull this shaft out. And then we will put this hub back here and put a bolt through it to take the strain off of the brake lines so it's not hanging. And we'll go to the other side, dis disassemble, and have a look at the other side drive shaft. It's slightly different. So we'll get this back up and get this drive shaft out and go around the other side. Right, around the driver's side now. Undone our two pins for the hub. Again, and the drive shaft nut. Now, I'm gunning this off with an impact gun. This will be tight. Obviously, once you Punched out your stakes, little punch, punch them out. Try and do this, you're probably not going to have a gun, you're probably going to have to use your bar. Best way of doing this to lock this up is so you just turn this, so you can turn the whole thing. Screwdriver, a bit of metal through, caliper into disc. And it will lock the disc from moving so you can undo this nut. Oh, we're going to get all this disassembled like the other side, then we'll get in there and I'll show you how to get the intermediate bearing from the driver's side drive shaft so we can get the drive shaft out this side. Okay, we're back under the van. This is the drive shaft. As you can see, it's got nothing bolts going through this drive shaft that goes into the gearbox. Now that will pull straight out of the gearbox but this intermediate bearing will hold it in place. So we need to undo our nuts and bolts here. Now these should be welded on to this plate. So we should have to undo these tens. One, two, three, up there. Undo them and then that plate should slide with this out to get the drive shaft out of the box this side. So let's get these out. Okay, 10 mil bolts out. Plate's loose. This is the bearing that goes inside this housing. Now, once you've loosened the bolts off, you're going to want to tap this hammer. Spray some penetrating fluid in there. Use a tap, it will eventually work its way out. And then you'll be able to pull it out of the gearbox. So, I pull this shaft out now. The 
rubber that's on there made it stuck so you might have to pull that off the back before you go much further that's cover and then you can pull the shaft straight out and then we'll do the same we'll hang these back up out the way take the strain off all right so back in the engine bay so i'm disconnecting things from <coughs> Anything's going to put a band itself to the engine. So, good and bold. The bleed off this tube, it's come off, but it is a, one of these clips. Now, you can pop it open with a screwdriver, but you won't get them back together really unless you've got a pair of these. So, I do believe it goes back together if you haven't. Um, Need to take off the. This is the vacuum line, which goes obviously to the vacuum pump. Take that off and move out of the way. ECU plug on this side comes with the engine, the whole loom comes with the engine. So undo that, yellow tab, push it out and lift the whole thing up and it slides out. This, this plug as well from the motor plug, and then that will come with the engine. Diesel line from pump. Oh. Diesel line from the filter. I'm going to take them out of the way. That will come into the engine. That will stay with the van. The fuel feed line. We'll turn it on. So that will stay with the van. Just out of the way. And we're starting to look at things like gear linkages. Also needs disconnect on the battery cable at 10 mil goes on to here because that will go with the van as the engine for itself. This will stay on the van. So we've got a few more bits disconnected and we'll come back. Right, so we've disconnected our turbo feed line, 13 mil bolt down here, screws into the engine block needs to be removed. Two Allen keys, five Allen keys come up this way near the four inch drive. Come up with some do there. Loosen this out of the way, take it off the turbo. Taking off the plugs, wiring, anything down this side. You also have to pipe for the power steering, it needs to come off. So disconnect the clamp, put it off, this drain this into something. And that's obviously empty. Put the pipe back on for the minute. Stuffing and dripping out. Diesel lines are off. Heater matrix tubes that go down the back. Down in there. They just the push fit under the clip. Pull the clip up. Pull them off. They go with the engine. The pressure sensor screws up there. Under the 10 mil, under the wiring, and go with the engine too. Disconnected our gear linkages. Find the air pliers underneath and pop them off. And they just pop out. And these, they pop straight out. And push them upwards, and tank underneath and pull up. Pop them out. Now we're going to look at I'll take this plate off just a bit to get underneath to take the slow cylinder off to try and keep it with the engine and get that off and then we're almost ready for engine mounts and engine removal right back underneath because that exhaust off of the sleeve a bit of a difficult one but how I come to handy air conditioning compressor disconnected obviously if We've degassed this, but obviously you can take it off, take the belt off and take the compressor off with these tubes on, keep the gas in it if you've got no way of degassing it. Taking the coolant tube hose off up there. 
And that's pretty much it for underneath. Obviously, you've got your gearbox reverse and switch. The earth strap needs to come off and any wiring is attached to it. We can go back down. Go to the top again now. It's one more hose for the power steering. And we're ready to drop out. Right, this is the last pipe we need to disconnect on the back of the power steering pump. This one's off, that goes with the engine. Now it's going to go around and check disconnected every the wiring, the hoses, anything that's associated with being connected to the van itself. Once you've done that, we get our engine crane and start to hook it up. Some lifting points. I'm going to drop the engine down and out the bottom. Obviously, I'm working on a ramp. It will come out the top. We might have to remove maybe the turbo charger, but as you can see how you go, we're going to go down the bottom, which is easier. So we'll get it hooked up and get it out. Okay, so engine out now. Gone out through the bottom. So it will go out through the top, but it's a bit of a faff. So if you've got access to lift it, best to do that. So and say get your engine out and start work on sorting out the chain. <laughs> 